uh, traditionally in, from the Buddhist teaching. It's called uh, karma. It's a concept which sometimes is also related to the principle of cause and effect. Now, maybe I mentioned it in uh, some of the videos before, but it's still very, very useful to understand it. It is just saying that nothing happens out more or less only by coincidence. Things start to happen because their constellation or because something has lined up in just the proper way for it to now fulfill itself. And so we say when you plant the apple seed, the chances are high that you can get an apple tree. And when you are planting an orange seed, you can also have the potential to get that orange tree. And now the question is, how good when you watch out in this life and when you watch out at yourself, can you see all these things that needed to be lined up in order for you, let's say, to succeed in something, in something particular. And so there it also comes to, it has also something to do maybe with strategy or maybe with the ability to read, to read the science of this life. And the better, like in the chess game, the better you can read the signs, the better you understand how that game there works, the higher the possibilities are that this game is going to end in the way how you imagine this game to end, meaning that you're the winner. If you don't know how the rules of the games are, if you cannot read the other person, if you don't even know yourself good enough, I think you're going to make quite a lot of mistakes in, in, this, in that game. Many people nowadays maybe think also you need to live in the monastery or maybe shave your head and be monk or live like a monk. Well, let's say like this, it helps. It helps because all of this only means that for some period in your life, you don't care, let's say, what style you have. You're not interested to have a relationship at those moments. So at the end, it's really just about that you have some dedicated time where you say, first of all, I invest in myself. One year, two years, three years. So, but ultimately everything that we like try to share from the methods in this monastery, everybody should be able to use it. To live inside the monastery, this uh, has never been and will never be something for the mainstream, yeah? Only crazy ones like me do this. <laughs> there's for some for, for everyone there's something so that's that's the point and this is why it also makes sense then to why at all I think there are methods that can be shared to the public some things it's not interesting for them because nobody would really have the, the time to practice these things. But other things, um, it's good and important to know. And somewhere there we, we need to find the balance for what to share out and what remains inside the temple walls. Yeah, and now, for example, when I talk about the, the retreat and getting away for some time from this outside world. Yeah, what does it mean? It really means you go, in our case, you're inside this monastery, you're not leaving this monastery, you are not uh, spending too much time, let's say, on the smartphone or on the internet, or even you don't watch any movies or any television or any shows. So you are very careful about where are you spending your time actually in those 24 hours day that you have. Yeah. 
let's say in winter time you sleep eight hours nine hours okay still afterwards you have 15 hours what are you doing with those 15 hours mm. so normally our the daily schedule is really like this that at around six in the morning normally my disciples and the novices they already start to stand up because six o'clock until seven is the time where first of all all the animals in this monastery uh, need to be taken care of meaning the food for the horses the food for the dogs the food for the cats this is what's happening between six and seven other ones are preparing the breakfast at that time because seven o'clock then is breakfast and then starting from eight o'clock until 11 this is like the first morning session for training summertime winter time it's a little bit different but at the moment we are starting normally with the meditation so sitting meditation very calm warming up the body just gently but then afterwards it's just sitting calm and just breathing this is how the day starts and then comes like the physical training like you saw it before a little bit more active and also depending on uh, what is it that this student for example wants to develop at the moment yeah so sometimes we have group training but sometimes we also have individual training where you have to take care of uh, yourself where you want to proceed and 11 until 1 so which is where we are at this moment is normally the working time uh, working time which means emails need to be answered then just the general work that needs to be done inside the household in terms of you know, vacuuming the floor cleaning the windows washing the toilets cleaning washing the clothes going shopping that takes place now in that 11 to 1 uh, period and one o'clock is lunchtime. After lunchtime, we normally have a break until three o'clock. And then three o'clock until around five o'clock is again a training time. Yeah. Training time and six o'clock we have dinner. And then a short break and seven until nine is again a next block where it's dedicated for practice. So there are actually three blocks of practices every day and they can differ because when I talk about practice it's not just about physical practice. It can also mean it's something that you practice which is good for your mind. Sometimes you practice something which is good for the way how you are breathing sometimes you practice something which is then eventually good for your mood sometimes you practice something which is then really physically good for the way how you look so practice for me is just that you are developing something on you not just like physically speaking so, and this is what the practice times uh, are dedicated for so that doesn't always mean that we go for running or just like doing push-ups or doing weight training or doing kicking and punching this is one way of training but like I said also this complete way of thinking and what is like really important also to share to the people outside there because I don't think that the majority of people is interested in punching and kicking no it is about to just get access to more different methods that you can use in order to improve the way how this life feels to you. This is the main point of all of these practices. So it doesn't matter what, how your life look at the moment, but what we all have the same is you have a body, I have a body and there are methods to keep the body healthy 
you have a mind, I have a mind. And there are ways how to develop the mind in such a way that you don't make too many mistakes when it comes to taking decisions. Meaning, there are ways how to take decisions that afterwards you are not going to regret. That can, for example, mean it's better to take decisions in a state of the mind that we would call it, um, it's a clear mind. It's not a mind which is like based upon emotion. Not a mind that was just angry a few seconds before. Yeah. So then people have different emotions, we have different emotions. Nevertheless, taking decisions out of emotion is not a good idea. Yeah. Everybody has organs, we have organs. Everybody has muscles, we have muscles. Therefore, this is, the, this is what it's about. To go deeper into yourself and try to penetrate all the layers that are making you become who you are. And all these areas can be trained and should be trained. It's about the life quality of each individual. That's what is the important part, the life quality. It's not about the punching and it's not about the kicking. But life quality sometimes can also mean you just feel more stable, you just feel better that when you go somewhere, you know that you are feeling strong, you are feeling ready, you feel that you are able to protect the ones that you like. So that means that you are feeling strong, that you feel solid, that you feel prepared. This can also have a significant influence in the way of your life quality, in the way of how you are like walking through this lifetime. Be stable. And this is these are simple things right now why all the disciples, all the students that I have here, why I want them to also learn about the martial arts. Because this is what it's about. You want to develop your body in such a way that you feel strong, that you feel vital. But not just that you feel like this, it's also important that you really are strong and vital in comparison to yourself if you would not do the training. That's important. So all this martial art training, it is about, in ancient times, it was about preparing and forging your body in such a way that you become a weapon or that your, your limbs, your body, becomes suitable to use it as a weapon. It doesn't mean you have to do it. It just means you need to forge it like this, first of all. This is why still nowadays, 1,500 years, even uh, after the original founding of the tradition in China, we are still keeping up exactly these training methods. because to express physical strength absolutely has an impact upon how strong your mind is. It's not the only one, but it certainly is like related. It's called uh, in the past. Yeah. It's called uh, warrior monk. Yeah. So normally, when we translate it, it's called 
warrior monk. So if you take it literally or if you read it in this way, it means number one is there is a warrior. Okay, that's it. First of all, there is a warrior. So now whatever that warrior means to you. Number one, there is the warrior. And then there's the monk. So it's a warrior who lives as a monk, which means he has the capacity, he has the potential of bringing out the warrior, but he doesn't do it. Why not? Because martial arts, the practice of the wushu or being a warrior, very often warrior, yes, also including the word war, we don't want war. It's not what we want. Because in this war people get hurt, in this war you have even more suffering. Yes? So, the warrior normally is, uh, sometimes we can call it, it's the dark side of you. It is the dark side of a person. The only difference why it's called warrior and it's, and it's not called, let's say, a demon is because sometimes demons are controlling you. A warrior is different. It's the same type of power, it's the same type of force, but you are in control of it. So you have disciplined the dark side of yourself. This is the warrior part. And that means, but because you know that when you bring this out, it can cause a lot of suffering. It can cause a lot of harm also if you use it in the wrong way. That's why it's not our aim to bring out that warrior at all times. But you need to be able to at least have that spark inside of you that when somebody starts to hurt people in your surrounding, in your family, you need to have this fire and bring out then the warrior. This is uh, how I would express it. And it's better that you control this type of energy than you have no control over this energy. Yeah. But every human has it. If you are provoking a person just long enough, it's going to come out. And what comes out there? Now the question is, who is controlling it? And yeah, some are called uh, controlled by demons and other ones control themselves. But the force is the same. It's very powerful. Thank you so much to Master Xie Hung Yi. Today's video was sponsored by Mullenbrothers.com, the best motivational clothing brand in the world, where you can now get the Rise and Grind series, the Hardest Work in the Room series, and the Inspire Chain series. And if you are lucky, there are also some books available on the website. Um, all that support goes back into making these projects possible, and hopefully we'll make a future project possible with Master Xie Hung Yi. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.